Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome from to, to all of you from different parts of the world. Uh, this is Krishna Vadula from IUCEE, Indo Universal Collaboration for Engineering Education, uh, hosting this um, this webinar on behalf of uh, IFES, uh, International Federation for Engineering Education Societies, and GDC, Global Engineering Dean Council, as well as IUCEE. Thank you all for joining. It's a, it's a real pleasure to have uh, you know this very distinguished group of people making the presentation here. Actually, it's a team of people, but the main presentation will be made by uh, you know, by Wahi and uh, and and Wahid Azizi is a program manager at the Royal Academy of Engineering, uh, managing the Engineering X, that is Engineering Skills where they are most needed, ESMN program. Is an enthusiastic engineer and development professional with two years of experience dedicated to making the world a better and safer place to live and to connect with professionals to the same goal. Uh, he will be joined in, um, by, with, by his colleagues, by two academic coll uh, two ex colleagues from the Royal Academy of Engineering, also uh, Shane McHugh, who is the head of international partnerships, and Cordelia you know, Bush, senior manager engineering X. And so we are here to listen to them talk about uh, engineering the Ro and the Royal Academy of Engineering and its global outreach. Thank you so much Wahi and uh, and Shane and Cordelia for uh, for this uh, excellent uh, presentation. So I'm going to hand this over to you and um, back over to you Shane. I'm mean, Wahi. Go ahead. I'm going to switch my team off. Thank and you and so I'm encouraging, encouraging the audience to chat and chat questions anytime you want to. Okay over to you Wahi. Thank you. Thanks, Krishna. It's an absolute pleasure to be here today. Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm your speaker, Wahid Azizi. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today as uh, uh, I talk about the Royal Academy of Engineering. Uh, both IFES and the Academy uh, share common goals of enhancing engineering education. This uh, reminded me of the findings of our research project in, two, uh, in 2019, we launched the Global Engineering Capability Review uh, Report, which shows the breadth and diversity of engineering strengths and weaknesses around the world. The Global Engineering Capability Review Report highlighted two key challenges uh, for engineers, data gap and data accuracy. Many countries struggle to collect and report accurate data on a variety of indicators that could support safe and innovative engineering. The second challenge highlighted by this uh, report, engineering education quality. Countries often face problems not in producing enough engineers, but in producing high quality engineers who are able to uh, conduct the work required of them. This challenge reminded me of some of my experiences that I would like to share with you before I start my presentation. In 2019, before the Global Engineering Capability Review, we carried out an online survey called for Ideas 2019. Nearly 140 people uh, from 29 countries uh, highlighted that engineering education is the first challenge in the country. Back in 2009, I attended a workshop organized by IMF World Bank in Washington, D.C. Participants from uh, more than 15 countries prioritized education as the first challenge in all those countries. Earlier in 2003, I facilitated planning exercise in one of the provinces in Afghanistan. The local communities prioritized education as their first priority and challenge. In addition, it reminded me of the speech of one of my professors, Dr. Alipur in 1995, at our graduation ceremony. The engineering knowledge and skills you have learned during your education were only to guide you to the path towards engineering. To become a successful engineer, it's your responsibility to continually explore further your knowledge and skills. My learning throughout these experiences, throughout my career is that with technology development, increasing poverty, growing conflicts and wars, refugees and IDPs, and tense political situation around the world, engineering education will remain a, cha a challenge 
in the next decades as well as it remained over the past two, three decades based on my experiences. Therefore, to address the engineering education challenge, we all need to work together to support engineering education institutions, graduates, employers, and individual engineers in new approaches to enhance engineering education quality around the world. Um, today, I'm going to speak to you about the Royal Academy of Engineering. At the end of my presentation, you will hopefully learn about the Academy, who we are, what we do, Academy 2025 strategy, and Academy UK and global programs. The UK's uh, uh, Royal Academy of Engineering is the UK um, uh, National Academy. So we have we are a charity. We deliver public benefit from engineering excellence and technology innovation. As a national academy, we provide progressive leadership for engineering and technology and independent expert advice to government in the UK and beyond. As a fellowship, we bring together an undeveloped community of leading business people, entrepreneurs, innovators, and academics from every part of engineering and technology. Our vision, our charitable mission is to develop, deliver public benefit through engineering. Through, yeah, through engineering excellence and technology and innovation. We have outstanding uh, convening power nationally and internationally. We understand how to make systems and innovations make a positive difference to society. We are trusted for our independence um, uh, and professional excellence. Our 2025 overarching goal is to harness the power of engineering uh, to build a sustainable society and an inclusive economy that works for everyone. The Academy works in three ways to address our goals. In collaboration with its fellows and partners, the Academy is growing talent and developing skills for the future, uh, driving innovation and building global partnerships and influencing policy and engaging the public. Today, we will tell you about some of the work we do uh, to deliver these ambitious, ambitious goals. Academy programs. The Academy runs programs of grants, fellowships, and prizes to support and persuade of engineering activities and, uh, uh, and to enable closer contact between academia and industry. Here I'll be presenting the summary of some of our UK and uh, uh, global programs. Research program. The Academy's research program offer comprehensive and bespoke support for excellent researchers while fostering long-term collaborations between academia and industry. In research, we support researchers at all stages of their career from early career researchers, early career researchers, mid-career researchers, and established researchers. Some of the program like engineering for development research fellowship uh, for early careers, industrial fellowships for mid career, and chair in engineering technology for established researchers. And enterprise hub support for entrepreneurs. The academy's enterprise hub um, sub, uh, offers a number of grants aimed at identifying and supporting the next generation of high potential entrepreneurs and prizes celebrating um, uh, success and in innovation and entrepreneurship. So the number of uh, fellowships we offer through enterprise uh, program is engineering uh, um, enterprise fellowship. 
Enterprise Fellowship supports creative entrepreneur engineers who have an exceptional innovation that they plan to commercialize. Scott Scale Up Accelerator um, for leaders of high growth SMEs. This program is designed to prepare you to scale up your co the, the company. It's an opportunity to refine uh, the entrepreneur's strategy and enhance leadership skills while continuing to work on your business. And regional talent uh, uh, engine. The, this program is a new offer that all uh, uh, that will provide a tailored program of support to aspiring engineers and technology entrepreneurs in different regions of the, uh, the UK. Uh, education programs. The academy's education programs are focused on addressing the UK's engineering skills challenge. The program works across all phases of education to encourage the widest the diversity of people to work as technicians and engineers. Some of the programs, um, uh, the engineering education, the engineering uh, in schools, the STEM activities, is committed to engaging the school students with science, technology, engineering, and mathematics by providing resources and training for teachers. Further education is uh, supporting further education by providing access to engineering, teaching, and learning resources. Higher education is committed to providing support for students and academics at the UK higher education institutions so that we can work together uh, towards our goal of building an inclusive economy and a sustainable society for all. Education and skills policy. Um, the academy's work is to understand and support the supply of engineers in the state of engineering education throughout the education system. Webinars. The academy um, uh, launched an online series of webinars uh, of STEM web education skills policy seminars. The webinars here uh, hear from different guest speakers each week on a range of topics covering schools, technical and higher education affecting science and te technology engineering skills. This is engineering campaign. First launched in 2018, this is engineering is a multi-year campaign led by the Royal Academy of Engineering in partnership with Engineering UK and major engineering organization to encourage more young people from all backgrounds to consider engineering uh, as their career. So the education program, some of the scholarship programs, the program engineering leaders scholarship um, program provides support for undergraduates in UK higher education institutions who display the potential to become leaders and innovators in engineering. Visiting professor scheme, um, UK, uh, the industry into UK academia initiative aims to utilize the engineering experience of visiting professors backgrounds as industrialists, entrepreneurs, consultants, or innovators to enhance teaching and learning as well as the employability and skills of UK engineering degree students. And Sainsbury Management Fellowship um, scheme funded uh, um, is the MBA uh, scholarship scheme of the Engineers and Business Fellowship. The scheme enables engineers of highly career potential to undertake a full-time MBA. And our policy programs and awards. The Academy Policy Development and Award undertakes a range of activities to ensure that engineering is at the heart of policy making, providing authoritative and partial advice and expertise bring together leading engineers from across the all disciplines to work together on issues of national and global uh, importance. We set the agenda for education and diversity in UK engineering and technology and are an advocate for the need to plug the engineering skills gap. Uh, engineering Zero campaign continues to uh, advance and promote the crucial contribution engineers 
can make in response to the need for urgent action on climate change following COP26. Policy Fellowship. Uh, twice a year, the Academy selects exceptional policy makers to become policy fellows. This intensive professional development program builds the stronger connections between policymakers and, tech and the technical community in support of better evidence-based policy making. The Academy's award uh, recognizes and rewards very best of engineering talent. Uh, awards for early and mid-career engineers, um, including the Royal Academy of Engineering Engineers, Trust Young Engineer of the Year to uh, awards and the silver medals. Awards for teams who have delivered significant projects or innovations. Awards for exceptional service to engineering from within and beyond the fellowship. Mark Robert Award. Mark Robert Award <clears throat> is the premier prize for UK engineering run by the Royal Academy of Engineering since 1969. It recognizes engineering achievements that demonstrate outstanding innovation, tangible societal benefit, and proven commercial success. Winning teams receive 50,000. So 2022 winner, Quanta Dialysis Technologies for creating a compact and portable dialysis machine, allowing more flexible and accessible care for patients with renal failure. Diversity and inclusion. The academy, at the academy, we have put diversity and inclusion at the heart of our strategy. Engineering needs people with different experiences, ideas, and perspectives so that we can respond with the best and most innovative solutions to the problem of our world is facing. Our diversity in uh, program in inclusion programs have a number of programs, a fellowship fit for future. As we look forward towards our 50th anniversary in 2026, it's important that our fellowship uh, embodies that full breadth and diversity of engineering excellence. So in July 2020, we set a goal uh, to elect more new fellows from groups currently underrepresented in the fellowship through our FED for the Future campaign. The Diversity Impact Program aims to inspire change in university engineering departments so that all students succeed and unique perspective and experience of engineers from diverse backgrounds continue to enhance the profession. We provide grant funding um, for new projects in university engineering departments that address the unequal outcomes uh, experienced by students from underrepresented countries. Graduate engineering uh, engagement program is our award-winning program run in partnership with engineering employers, which aims to increase the transition of engineering graduates from diverse backgrounds into engineering em employment. Global programs. We are a national academy with a global outlook. The academy's global programs include developing relations with other nations, national academies, leading debate and public policy projects, promoting UK engineering capability and building capacity in the countries. Um, sustainable development program. The sustainable uh, development program includes supporting development through international engineering collaborations. We advance engineering's contribution to a safer, healthier, more prosperous world for people in developing countries and emerging economies, uh, tackling the global challenges of our age. The, some of the programs, uh, the Africa Prize, Africa Grants Frontiers, Leaders and Innovation Fellowship. As an example, Higher Education Partnership in Sub-Saharan Africa. The program aims to improve engineering capacity in Sub-Saharan Africa through improving the knowledge, skills, and employability of engineering graduates 
and building the research capacity of local higher education institutions. This is achieved through grant giving partnerships with local industry in the universities and UK institutions, up to 140,000 grants over a two year period. Uh, GCRF Africa Catalyst. The aim of GCRF Africa Catalyst is to strengthen professional engineering bodies in sub Saharan Africa so that they can effectively promote the profession, share best practice, increase local uh, engineers' capa engineering capacity to help drive development. This is achieved through grant giving and partnerships with UK institutions. And the Academy's international partnerships programs help develop and promote the UK's global position in engineering and innovation. We also work to enhance international engineering leadership in addressing global challenges. We aim to achieve these objectives through collaboration with like-minded partners in the UK and internationally. Some of our international programs, talent and mobility visas and international mobility programs, partnerships and summits, and engineering acts. Global talent uh, visa, uh, is a UK immigration category for talented and promising individuals in a specific sectors wishing to work in the UK. The Academy acts the, as the endorsing for all engineering applications. Uh, the Academy is also involved in shaping the policy and governance of the global talent visa route alongside the other endorsing bodies, including the RSBA and UKRI. Uh, partners, some of the, our partnership activities include, uh, for example, UK-China exchange on net zero, uh, UK-US uh, exchange on 6G, responsible engineering and complex systems, Kate's engagement with global engineering leadership, including on SDG, diversity uh, and inclusion and other issues. Engineering X. Engineering X uh, was founded by the Academy and Lloyd uh, Register Foundation and has its own branding, Engineering X, as you can see on the slide. Engineering X is an international collaboration funded by, founded by the Academy and Lloyd Register Foundation that brings together some of the world's leading problem solvers to address the great challenges of our age. The Engineering X community is currently working on five missions. Human rely on safer complex systems uh, mission. Humans rely on critical infrastructures to survive. Much of this infrastructure is made up of complex systems uh, that are highly uh, interconnected and interdependent. When one fails, many others are also affected with catastrophic uh, consequences. We built and convened diverse expert communities to understand the system's landscape, develop educational resources and tools, and uh, nurture advocates for systems approaches to safety. Safer end of engineered life um, mission. The decommissioning, dismantling and disposal of products and structures at the end of their life can be harmful to human health and the environment, as well as uh, squandering uh, scarce resources if not carried out responsibly. So end of engineering life is really planned for end of a system change is needed to add the safety and sustainability issues with we champion design for the demanufacture and circular economy uh, principles. Transforming systems through partnership uh, is to solve the most Pressing sustainability and developing challenges, academics must work in partnership with industry, government, 
and community, uh, communities to build trust, engineer uh, appropriate solutions to scale their uptake whilst training the next generation to do so too. We catalyze partnerships between industry and academia to facilitate research, collaboration, and knowledge exchange to address the uh, sustainable de development goals. Pandemic preparedness supports the UK and global engineering community to learn from the COVID-19 pandemic through sharing lessons on disruptive solutions and best practices in the pandemic prevention, preparedness, response, and recovery. And finally, engineering skills, we are the most needed. This is the program I manage. The challenge is population growth in money low income in newly industrialized economies is driving huge investment in critical infrastructure. Lack of domestic capacity to maintain and operate infrastructure causes serious safety challenges and high accidents rates. We support the delivery of skills in education programs to develop capacity and enhance safety standards so that infrastructure remains safe and fit for purpose. Um, some of our current activities under this program, we have 35 impact grants, projects in uh, 19 countries, 25 safety champions in engineering education from six countries, and uh, in the process of scoping global engineering capability review too. And safety skills webinar series is uh, the other uh, strand of the program that currently we're working. Thank you. Okay, very good, excellent. So uh, let's uh, move on to the next phase where we bring in our panelists, right? Shane is uh, is the other panelist also here? Uh, Cordelia Birch. Let me just check. So if I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Yeah, you can stop sharing the screen so that people can see us. Let me just see if Cordelia is here. So I'm going to make her a panelist. Uh, hi, Cordelia, how are you? I am here. I don't know if you I can hear me. Good. Okay, so we can uh, uh, we can have a full house here. Hans, if you want to join us, you're welcome to join us too, right? All right, so we we are. Uh, Excited about this uh, uh, discussion we're going to have. Uh, we have uh, some comments. So we encourage all kinds of com any comments from the audience uh, and uh, questions. Uh, one one question that pops right up, and you know, I am you know, the others that will come up is uh, how do, how what are the main sources of finance for the activities of the Royal Academy? Where's the money coming from? I can I can um, I can start with answering that. Um, sure. So as um, as Wahid mentioned, we have a royal charter, um, and we so we have a commitment to the UK government to actually provide um, engineering research, policy advice, and education work. So we're um, we get core funding from the UK mm -hmm. government for that uh, for that objective. So that's a core objective of ours. Um, which amounts to um, probably about seventy percent of our total funding, uh, and the rest of our funding comes from a mixture of project funding from different sources. Uh, sometimes UK government, sometimes industry, um, uh, and um, and sometimes foundations. So the engineering X is probably our biggest um, individual partnership outside of partnership with government. Um, and that's that's a, that's funded um, by a large register foundation, and then um, from uh, a small amount funded from donations uh, from um, from fellows and from, uh, from individuals because we also are a charity. Um, so that's probably what our funding breakdown um, looks like. Okay, that's good. That's a good uh, summary. And uh, let me move on to the uh, next question here. Uh, I think you talked about. Um, STEM programs in schools, right? In K through 12, I think there was some activity in that area. 
are driven in UK and other countries. Uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, do you get engineering students to to go to these schools and um, work on projects with them? Do you have that kind of pro those kinds of programs? Yeah, it's really interesting, actually. What we're well, I'll, I'll jump in with this, and it'll be easier, easier Kofi. You can, you can add things. Um, when we was talking about our education activities, um, it's quite interesting because we have been doing education uh, work within the UK for thirty years, and the the level of what we're doing and the kind of sophistication of what we're doing has evolved a lot over that time. So in um, uh, in schools, uh, we started doing curriculum enhancement work. Um, so both working with government on developing um, uh, curricula and producing kind of um, activities that teachers could use um, could, could, could use to um, help teach maths and um, and, and, and science curricula. Uh, but we moved on to um, doing particular interventions in schools in less well-off areas of the UK. Um, where we have we've kind of the I, I guess all countries have this to an extent, but the UK has a particularly acute problem that engineering is um, the the engineering profession is generally um, very white, uh, very male, and very middle class, and roots to the engineering profession from lots of um, uh, diverse backgrounds, but also economic backgrounds. Is 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 are are are, um, are not as good as they could be. So we've done particular interventions with schools, with individual schools, as pilots in um, some less well-off parts of the UK for a while. Um, recently, recently we've moved on to kind of thinking more holistically about um, engineering education. So we produced a very good report, which I can um, I, I can link to afterwards if people are interested on engineering habits of mind. So, you know, in other words, engineering isn't a, a particular, isn't just a particular set of technical skills. There's a fundamental set of habits of mind that inform engineering, which um, we, which we need to um, need to inculcate in our in our in our children, and we also need to spread to other other domains because these mm -hmm. these are the the habits of mind that ensure a kind of a well managed um, mm -hmm. uh, physical and um, uh, and societal infrastructure. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a that's a that's a brief kind of rundown of what we've been doing on um, primary education. I should say we're also um, the thing that Wahid mentioned. This is engineering is quite a large scale campaign, and um, that's got a lot of industry funding behind it. Um, videos for um, I think uh, fourteen to sixteen year olds. Uh, in the UK, that's a very important age because that's the time that you make your uh, your choices for um, uh, your final subjects at school. Um, showing uh, young engineers working on things that teenagers are interested in, be that the environment or um, space technologies or um, nice fashion, uh, and these these are the um, these have a huge um, success rate and they've we can see that they've kind of tipped the dial of the last five years in, in terms of what teenagers do. I can see that Cordelia is waiting to jump in. Cordelia, you want to jump in? No? <laughs> no, no, just just moving in my chair. Thank you. Shane's oh. covered it. Uh, he, any had comments on these two points that came up so far? Yeah, I just wanted to add that regarding the uh, habits of mind, even the uh, global engineering capability review report, which I mentioned at the beginning, which is a wonderful review report, has reference to referring to these uh, habits of minds. So I encourage uh, our audience to go and read these reports. They are, they are wonderful uh, insights. So that might be very useful for several for different countries. Okay. Uh, question about internships. Does uh, the, the academy support any kinds of intern global internships? Students from different countries move into other countries or you know, in academia, wherever. Are there, do you have some program like that? Anybody want to react to that? I can I can talk about some internships that we um, used to run but uh, stopped running just before the pandemic, unfortunately, and they haven't kicked off again. But um, yeah. 
uh, well, he'd mentioned the Africa Prize for Engineering Innovation, where we support um, African innovators who are um, trying to commercialize their, their innovations and they're all innovations that have kind of uh, social or environmental impact. Uh, mm -hmm. So we used to partner with UCL and then a few other universities um, whose uh, engineering students would be matched with the uh, with the innovators in sub-Saharan Africa and would go out for a, um, a two month period to to do an internship um, in, in the startup and support them with uh, developing the innovation and developing the business side. And we kind of match them depending on the skills and the interests of the, the university students and the particular needs of the, um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the startup. Um, and yeah, unfortunately when the pandemic hit, that obviously ground to a halt um, and I don't think has been picked up uh, but I think uh, it was a it was a really interesting scheme and and quite um, valuable for both sides. So you know could could potentially be considered in the future. Um, and we do also take um, UK interns as well. So we we currently have an intern in our team who's supporting on monitoring and evaluation activities and helping us write case studies. Uh, who's uh, in the second year at university here in the UK. Anybody else wants to comment? Otherwise, I have a question about uh, how do people get uh, involved with your academy? Like, for example, how do they apply for? Is there a list of academy projects on your website? And uh, if anybody interested, would, is there some way to for them to approach you guys? Well, Jump in. <laughs> I mean, this is we're just being very polite. We do all know the answer, <laughs> which is yes. There is, um, um, and we, we run quite a lot of programs both in the UK and globally. Um, we've just done we've just done a, a refresh of our website, um, so it um, uh, it all looks very bright and sparkle and sparkling and new. Um, but um, if people have issues, it's still it's still only in the first couple of weeks. If people have issues with broken links or whatever, just talk to Wahid or Coco or myself, and we will be able to um, direct you to the right place. But yes, there's a there's there's a full range of um, capacity building programs um, internationally, um, champion programs, um, uh, UK based research and education uh, programs, and a lot of opportunities to work with us in other ways. For example, you know, um, through uh, tenders for pieces of various pieces of work that we're doing. Um, I I just wanted to add as well that um, that one of the programs that we had mentioned, the Higher Education Partnerships in Sub-Saharan Africa program, uh, they've just launched um, a new call for applications. Um, so that will close on the sixth of September, uh, and it's uh, for two-year projects um, offering up to a hundred thousand. Um, so if if anyone is is interested and in, based in sub-Saharan Africa, then do check out the website because those are um, those are live now. Okay. Okay. You mentioned uh, a lot of societal types of programs and new technologies. So you see the uh, the new wave of uh, AI and machine learning. All of these kind of virtual reality showing up in any of your activities in different parts of the world. In what way? Uh, and do you well, think Coco, all of you want to come together? Do you want to talk about Africa Prize again? This, that's because that's a real good barometer for those kind of things. Yeah, definitely. Um, so in my in my previous role, I I managed the Africa Prize for Engineering Innovation, the program I mentioned previously that had these internships. Uh, so certainly in in the applications and and in the um businesses and innovations that we supported. Um, AI was becoming more and more common. Um, a lot of AI innovations, things around um, uh, one to do with uh, face recognition te technology that uses, because uh, I'm sure you've all heard the sort of bias in AI, it's often trained on kind of white male faces. So this was specifically trained on uh, faces from people in, uh, she was based in um, Sierra Leone, I think. Uh, and then also um, AI devices to speed up um the uh, ability for for doctors to screen um cervical cervical cancer i think from from pap smear tests um so it's really been used a lot in a lot of the innovations that we've been seeing uh and then i think it in a 
Uh, I think in Wahid's program as well, there's perhaps been some some VR used in in engineering education, perhaps. But there certainly we're, we're seeing a lot of that more and more, um, kind of uh, more advanced technologies being used in in innovations all over the world. Yeah, just uh, wanted to add through our safety champions in engineering education fellowship program. We're going to work on a project in uh, Malaysia and Philippines partner to work on using VR as, uh, uh, and teaching and learning in engineering education. Okay. Uh, question on, on the uh, evaluation and monitoring of your projects. The, so what kind of processes do you have for assessment and monitoring and of your projects and maybe uh, you know, help others to understand uh, the processes that you use so they can learn how to uh, mentor and and, and and develop evaluation processes for their own similar projects that they're working on. It's all tough. Um, this crowd is pretty it's tough. A, it's, a, tough it's, 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 <laughs> it's a really it's a really good question, and um, it's it's also a good opportunity, I guess, to plug the fact that we have um, we have an ITT out right now to do a, a major piece of 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 &E on one of our long-standing international programs. Um, is um, uh, what well, it was originally called in, um, industry academic partnership programs. It's now called transforming systems through partnership. Uh, it's a grant we've been running for um, six years in um, currently six countries, um, uh, seeding um, locally based universities to create broad ranging partnerships with industry, with the third sector, with government in order to. Um, uh, and with the UK, uh, with the UK university partner, in order to have a have a have a, a an impact on 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 the on SDG lo SDGs locally, um, to I mean, to I guess to, to get to get back to your point, we are um we have tried a lot of different models for having impact internationally. A lot of which were based on um the projects that have been successful in the UK and kind of adapt it for an international project, international context. Uh, we do see ourselves as pilots. You know, we're never going to scale these things up to be multi-billion pound projects, but we hope that the evidence we generate uh, is going to be um, compelling enough uh, for, for others to come into the space. Um, and I think a good example of that is actually investment in higher education in developing countries when we started doing that um, with the higher education program in sub-Saharan Africa maybe about eight years ago it was very much um, a blank space for for um, for the international development community they um, there was a feeling that a primary and secondary education were much more much more valuable and I think the one of the impacts we've had has, has, has been drawing more um, players into the, into that space, be it the you know, Diffid and British Council in the UK or lots of other funded international. Comments from Claudia, Cordelia and uh, Bahi. Sorry, <laughs> slip of the tongue. Yeah. That's all right. Um yeah I think I think Shane Shane covered it, but just to say um uh, I think for us at the Academy um monitoring and evaluation is is very much something that we're prioritizing at the moment. It's been something that we've been doing. Um, certainly all of our awardees who we give grants to and fellowships, uh, they all submit kind of regular reports so we can see what progress they're having, what impact they're having. Um, but uh, we're trying to uh, kind of improve that and, and roll something out sort of across the academy so we can better talk about uh, kind of in aggregate the, the change that we've made because we're working on so many different global challenges in so many different countries. Um, it can be hard to kind of pile together everything we've done and say, look at the change we've made here. We have lots of various different things that we've worked on all over the world. So that's something that we're working on um, at the moment. Thank you, Coco. Yes, as Coco mentioned, I think, um, and at project level, we um, uh, when we sign a contract with the awardees, so we expect them to submit progress and uh, like a number of research reports during the life of the project. So that we consider it as uh, to that we monitor whether the projects are going according to the plan 
or there are some changes into the implementation process. So this to, throughout the uh, grant scheme that uh, I managed uh, since 2020, I found this, uh, though there was COVID, travel restrictions, we haven't been able to visit any of projects, but I found these reports very helpful, giving us at least the, the picture of how hard it has been for our, 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 our these to implement the project and during the COVID, we're just uh, suddenly switching to an online uh, everything from what was planned initially, which was in person. And as well as the challenges, so we I found the majority of our work is very transparent and sharing the challenges they face and asking advice how to address them. So uh, it was a, a learning process though we haven't had the chance to visit some of our projects. But the reports has been very helpful. And we invite, in addition to that, we invite our partners to present for our board. So where they uh, deliver a presentation for the program board, explaining the progress and as well as the uh, progress towards outcome and impact of the project they planned for. So this is my experience over the past few years managing skills program. Thank you. Okay, so what, what I want to do for the next few minutes is uh, build on a comment from our former IFES president, Ramiro Jordan. Uh, this is something that occurred to me also. Uh, he has left actually, but uh, he's, he had to leave. But uh, yeah, we, we have you know, we have all of these uh, academies of the National Academy of Engineering in the U.S. Uh, we have one in U.K. and I'm sure all over the world we have uh, uh, groups like this who are doing some outstanding work. Uh, uh, the question is, can we all join hands to address one common problem that we all face, which is climate change? Uh, very few people are taking that very seriously. Unfortunately, can we all join hands and find a way? Uh, you know, I mean, very concrete things. Now, for example, I think the future generation of youngsters need to be more aware of, of this problem and how they can uh, do something about it. In fact, uh, so just for example, if you know, I, I walk into a classroom of first year students in engineering, right? And say, okay, uh, I'm turning on the switch and turning off the switch. Electricity is coming into the room, right? Uh, can you tell me how that is producing carbon dioxide and uh, creating problems for, for global warming? And very few of these first year students really understand how electricity pollutes the environment how the you know, majority of the power plants are still burning coal. And, and, and so, you know, things, simple things like this. So, so, I'm, so, so we are tempt, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to think about, and we're working a little bit towards that through IUC, to develop curriculum, okay, which can be shared across all colleges all over the world. Because the curriculum on climate change is going to be very similar. You know, so curriculum that can be taught at, some, at the first year level, one or two credits, second year level, third year level, fourth year level, and all engineering and science students can take that as a minor through their education program. So this has the potential for creating an army of uh, people who will uh, take these things and forward. So what do you think, Hans, you want to add to that and, uh, and then we'll jump to the other folks? Hans, uh, did you do this? I, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I just connected, uh, absolutely. You've raised so many fundamental issues. I'm. We are in discussions exactly with some student leaders uh, to come together, and this is one of the seeds I wanted to plant. And this is really the first time, Wahid, I deeply appreciate also meeting your colleagues. Uh, a, a, a thorough overall uh, description of the serious work that the Academy is carrying out, and I'm very happy that we will continue this dialogue to, to work in partnership. A key element that you've uh, mentioned, all three of you, is the engagement of students in the different ways. And I think in addition to the complexity of bringing Roy academies together, which I think is a brilliant idea, but it, from an implementational point of view, maybe may be quite difficult. But I'd like to plant the seed, and I want to have discussions with you, Wahid, and all of the, the academy, is uh, to take some concrete steps many of the issues identified today in Cape Town. We have an opportunity, and I'm representing here, you know on your board of directors, you have our GDC leader, our host Sunil, has asked me, he could not join us today, to bring up exactly how can the academy uh, engage and many of the activities, and I'm going to look at those closely, share it with many friends that you're engaged in, that a lot of people, I, I had some knowledge, but only limited knowledge. 
you are focusing on two key issues. Is Africa, without going into details, I've taken notes of that. Uh, we are bringing together uh, not only academicians, but corporate colleagues, also government and students. What I would like to see and plant the seed in this conversation to bring UK students to Africa, to Cape Town in November. I'm working with friends in Africa to bring greater student engagement in that event. I'm working with universities in the United States, of course, there are always financial variables per se, to come to Africa, to connect, to learn, to open their minds. I want to see the same, given the, the deep respect you have in the UK and of course in other countries, uh, UK students. I'm, so I'm planting some seeds here that I'd like us to, to, to really look at. We still have time to do that. There are resources, per se, just on those particular issues, per se. I can, I, I'll, I'll, at the end, uh, Krishna, I'll comment on other things. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let speaking. all three panelists comment yeah. on some of the points that I made and you made. Just go around, okay? Go ahead, Shane. And then Cordelia. Yeah, well, well, let's start. So there's, I, mean, I think there's, there's um, and it's a really, really good point. And there's, there's two things, probably, I would, um, I would point to the first thing is um that for the past decade um together with the u.s national academy of engineering and the chinese academy of engineering we've been running um a series of uh, summits for students and early career engineers called global grand challenge summits um uh, the next one is taking place in china in uh, 2023 there was a little bit of a lull during covid um but this is this is really all about um uh, the engineers of the future understanding uh, the challenges that they will have to face during their careers. Someone graduating today will be will be working till you know twenty twenty sixty two at the at the um, at the earliest. They will they will have to deal with net zero. They will have to deal with um, temperatures rising beyond they are beyond the level they are now. So this was about getting the, the engineering stars of today, people like Bill Gates, Bill I am, um, lots of um, um, Craig Ventner, lots of great innovators, talking to the next generation of students and bringing together the next generation of students from all three countries to collaborate and do innovative projects. It, and it was all based around global sustainability. So uh, the, the, the but we are looking to see what the next step up from that could be after the Chinese summit. And we're aware that three academies is substantial, but it's not enough. How can we, how can we make that global? So some of those ideas are, are floating around anyway. And then the other thing that our um, engineering education policy team are quite excited by, um, but we've just talked about it so far on the UK um, stage, is the idea of changing the whole framing of engineering education. So making it less about uh, specific technical skills and bringing the stuff that was on the margins, so sustainability, system thinking, ethics, entrepreneurship, bringing that into the center and making that the central pillar of engineering education. We're starting a project on the engineer of 2030. So how does engineering education change to produce people with those cross-cutting, um, capabilities and soft skills that you're going to need to actually solve these big challenges. Okay, Cordelia. Um, thank you. Uh, I was just going to add a few other things around um, working with students. So, um, and and kind of engineering curricula. So, one of the things that uh, one of our colleagues in the Engineering X team, they've been talking to Teddy in London, which is a university offering kind of a new model of engineering education which is very much um, problem and challenge based as opposed to, uh, you know, sectoral or thematic. Um, so we're, we're working with them and, and this particular the program, the Safer Complex Systems program has recently launched um, a series of case studies looking at um, complex systems, successes and failures and lessons learned. So they're trying to see if they can incorporate some of those within the, the TEDI curriculum to use those as kind of challenges that students are, in, are exploring. And I think, you know, that's sort of a pilot, but if, that, if that's successful, we'd definitely be interested to see how we could spread that, um, spread that around the world. Um, and uh, also that kind of forms part of some thinking that we're doing in Engineering X as well about how do we engage students more in, in solving global challenges. Um, 
and in as as Shane said, you know they they they're going to be the ones that have to deal deal with everything for the next thirty forty years. So we're we're doing a lot of thinking around that. Um, and then finally, just another program that we we work on the program Shane mentioned with where we're doing an evaluation, the the transforming systems through partnership program. So that's all about uh, sort of um, challenge inspired research and innovation, bringing together industry and academia. Um, but a, a big focus as well is also on um, embedding new skills and knowledge uh, into the curriculum for those students. Um, and so the pro projects often include um, MA or PhD students who are actually carrying out research, but as well, one of the outcomes of the, the projects is often a new module based around, you know, um, semiconductors or a new way of doing um, uh, wind turbines or something. Apologies, I'm not an engineer, so I'm, I'm not going to get very specific. But um, with, with, we're doing and thinking a lot about education and working with university students globally and particularly kind of how to give them the skills needed for the world that we want in the future. Excellent, excellent, wonderful. Thanks, Cordelia. I uh, will give Wahi the last word. He had the first word, now he gets the last word again. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I think it's um, uh, through the Engineering X Engineering Skills Program, we, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, through the Global Review Report, we identified the <clears throat> engineering education quality is a challenge. So most of the graduates do not have the right skills the employers need. So through the new grant scheme we launched, we encourage our applicants to provide opportunity for new graduates and students to be part of these projects, to experience and learn new things to make them ready for employment. So this is already built in our, into our uh, grant scheme, which is uh, we're uh, very excited to start some of the projects in the coming month. But generally, I would say we all in this webinar, wherever like we work on projects or programs, we need to provide opportunity for new students and new graduates if you want a better future. So we shouldn't limit them. So as much as we can, we need to provide the opportunities, let them come in and join us um, and uh, to be ready for the challenges face in the future thank you okay thank you panelists let's get this back to hans to closing thank comments. you thank you very much this has been an inspiring <clears throat> although wahid you and i have been in dialogue you've opened my mind and understanding much deeper and i'm very happy to meet shane and cordelia and let's use this as a seed to build a really strong relationship on several of the things not only in cape town uh, I'm in close contact with leaders in Europe, for example, at a conference, and I'm going to facilitate your engagement in Vienna and last late September in the EGIP 50th. I think for them and for you to broaden your network there. I'm working with a close friend, a leader in uh, Albania, to bring the countries in that region together in February, the GDC and IFE per se. And I, and, and I can see uh, your engagement in that without going into details. I've mentioned certainly Cape Town and all that, but I, a couple of other things that are really important to, to our team and also to Krishna is the important work that we have done the last three years now working on our edition of women engineering leaders writing their journeys. In Africa and India just came out. We're working now on the MENA Arab world in Southeast Asia and hope to bring on those books by the time around Cape Town, per se, and bring in women engineering leaders. In Africa, Arusha, we just had many women engineering leaders have a conference uh, just last week to bring together those leaders, for example, as they chart uh, the, 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 the future, per se. So I just wanted to you know, mention this. Uh, we'll continue the dialogue. I'm very inspired by the work that you're doing, and I'm very confident that we can find uh, new win-win opportunities to work in partnership this year and the next few years. I thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you all, and thank you for the participants who have provided us the and the topics for having these exchanges. Thank you all and be happy, be safe, and be healthy, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Peace care. be with you. Bye. Peace be with you. Bye bye. Bye bye, my friends. Bye bye. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you.